Senator Drew Springer, thank you so much. First day of the state legislative session, and we're already hearing that record surplus, now nearly $33 billion, and everyone wants to know, how is the state gonna spend it? How do you think that money, that surplus money should be spent? Well, I think the majority needs to be given back to the people we took it from, and that's the taxpayers. Um, and so we need to be doing property tax relief, um, whether that's in the form of homestead exemptions, uh, if that's a buy-down of that m and rate for our businesses, we may look at eliminating the inventory tax, or we may increase the personal property tax exemption for businesses. I think that needs to be the majority, but we can't give it all away because we do have some problems we need to address. I was just going to ask that because I know when Governor Abbott campaigned, he said he wants half that surplus to go towards property tax relief. Lieutenant Governor said, you know, we can't do all that because of the cap that is in place. Is there a way that you can do both, you know, protect the cap, but also give back half to property taxpayers, whether it's homeowners or business owners? We can do it a few different ways, potentially, is, you know, the legislature can vote to break that cap. Um, now, I think if, in my opinion, for me, as long as the remaining items are below population and inflation and tax relief, I'm happy to vote to break the cap if it's only for tax relief. And so we could do it that way. We could also do some things that would push it to the voters in constitutional amendments to have them ratify different things like the homestead exemption. And you know, you mentioned the state has other needs, obviously. In, in ranked order, um, where, where do you put those needs? Look, I, you know, it, it, when we talk rank order, it depends who you are. If I say we need to do, we need to make sure our retired teachers you know, get in, get a raise because of cost of living and the inflation caused, you know, the, by the administration in D.C. You know, retired teachers, that would be theirs. I got to tell you, mental health is, is, a, is a problem in Texas. We probably have 15 percent of people that are in county jails are waiting competency to stay in trial. And they've been sitting in jail sometimes as long as one and two years. So mental health is a big deal that we need to be able to address. School safety. I mean, if you have kids in school, you want to know your kids are safe. And so making sure we're doing things to prevent Uvalde, part of that being the mental health, but also hardening our schools, you know, locks, bulletproof windows, looking at barriers to where people can't drive through uh, and just mow people down with trucks as well. It's got to be one of those. Border security. I mean, it, that affects every one of us. Um, and it's not just the fentanyl, the human trafficking. Uh, it's everything we're seeing coming across. So, you know, I think that, you know, we're going to be looking at border security as one of those big issues as well. Um, let me go back to uh, teachers because you talked about retired teachers. What about, uh, because there's a, a real need for teachers and a shortage, a lot of, of them have left the profession. Does the state need to kick in more money for um, teachers, you know, the exit, new teachers? It, you know, if we were able to, we did it two sessions ago. We raised that minimum threshold and we put a percentage that had to go to teachers. If we do something that's increasing funding, it has to go to the teachers in the classroom to, to be able to attract them. But we're seeing shortages everywhere. Health and Human Services, uh, correctional officers. I talk mental health. There's, in today in Wichita Falls, there's 300 staff members short, which has 200 empty beds for mental health. And so we, we face that throughout the state. So we also have to look at how we're funding and paying all of our state employees, and that includes teachers as well. It's kind of like a vicious cycle. You have empty beds because you don't have the employees to, to, to staff them. That's right. Beds, which makes the problem worse. That's that's exactly right. And, and so it, it just, it, it drives through there. But like I said, you know, with that budget surplus, I've, I've brought an idea to the Lieutenant Governor and we'll see how that goes on, on potentially if that's a solution. But I know that, you know, most senators are looking at mental health as one of the big issues for the session. Care to share? Sure. I mean, look, Texas has got money. As we said, we were over $30 billion. I'd love to see $150 million go like an enterprise fund that attracts businesses, but to attract the 5,000 mental health professionals we're short into the state. Let's give each of them $30,000, let them move to Texas, whether they're from New York to California. If they want to come to Texas, they probably are looking to get away from what they're living in anyway. And so, hey, look, so we do it with companies. Why not do it with individuals? In, in the mental health field. In the mental health field. And they'd have like a two-year requirement to work in, in, the, in the public space. Um, you mentioned border security. It's now $4 billion that the, the state has spent um, just in this uh, two-year period. Does that need to become permanent? 
No, I hope it doesn't need to become permanent. I think it's going to continue to stay in as long as this administration continues to, the policies that they're that they have in place. Uh, I hope after this two years, uh, we get a Republican administration in Washington that secures our border, does the things to prevent that. Texas will always spend some level in there, uh, just like we did under the Trump administration, to make sure we fill the gaps that are specific to Texas, uh, to make sure the unique circumstances of the border are being addressed. Um, I also wanted to ask you about crime. Um, the lieutenant governor has said he wants more penalties on people who are using guns uh, illegally. Uh, where are you on that? Look, I, I think that's right. I mean, we want to protect the law-abiding citizens that carry guns. And therefore, we want to punish those who are doing wrong with guns. Um, and so I would support anything um, that makes it a, a tougher crime. If you use a gun in a crime, you ought to have a mandatory 10-year sentence. I think it sends a real strong message for that guy who's sitting in there for the first time thinking he's going to do a crime with a gun to rob somebody, uh, to rob a store, or anything like that. On the flip side, Democrats still want to make it uh, so to raise the age for people to buy a gun from 18 to 21, do you see that passing? I don't see that passing because I think we're looking at court cases that are already saying that's unconstitutional. Um, so I think there's other ways we can do to address that. One is the mental health aspect and, and we'll find other ways to make sure we're addressing it too. And my last question to you is about abortion. Obviously that made a lot of headlines last year with the overturning of Roe v. Wade and Texas's new abortion law. Uh, Senator Robert Nichols uh, said uh, a few months ago that he would be open to the idea of uh, increasing the, exem the exemptions from now where it's just to save the life of the mother to also include rape. I think another senator, Senator Huffman, said the same thing. Do you see that passing? I, look, I, you know, we'll, there's going to be a lot of legislation filed. Um, I'm not sure that that has the votes to, to get through the Senate. Um, you know, we, we're going to focus, I think, in the budget, uh, in talking with Senator Huffman, of making sure we have things for those mothers that are giving birth to make sure that the kids are taken care of. It's not just, you know, post, postmortem, postpartum uh, that we're addressing, but we're going to address those and make sure that the funding is right to make sure that those kids are taken care of. Uh, we want to, they're, they're God's children, so we want to welcome them into this world. Senator Drew Springer, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.